All right, I have a new tip for you, and that is how to use Zod to validate and provide typings for your environment variables. So the problem is when you define your environment variables using process.env, you can see that there's only two, node environment and the TZ. So if you have ports or, I don't know, super base URLs, etc., they're not going to show up here. And one way to do that is uh, by using the Zod library. So first thing what you want to do is npm install Zod, if you haven't already. And then we're going to create an env.ts file where we're going to be defining our schema and also do the validation. So first we want to define the schema as an object with all of the environment variables and their types. Then we want to validate process.env against our schema and return the result or throw an error if the process.env does not uh, fit the schema that we defined. And at the end, we want to export the result so that we can use it in our project. So let's do that. First, we want to bring in Z from Zod because that's going to be the uh, method that we're going to use to define the schema. And we can do that by just typing z.object and inside we can define all of our environment variables. For example, the port and we set the types as well. z.coers.number dot min 1000. So this means that the port variable must be a number and it must be minimum 1000. And then we can define any URLs or keys or environments, etc. You can check out the documentation of Zot to see all of the possible types that you can use. But let's say that this is our environment schema. So then we validate process.env against our schema by using the env schema.parse and we pass in process.env. So what it's going to do is it's going to um, take process.env, it's going to see all of the keys, all of the variables that are inside of the environment and compare them with the object that we have at the, at the top. And if something is not correct, it's going to throw an error. And this is important because we can use this method to validate our schema in either in CI, CD pipelines or when deploying to production. Okay, so if, if everything is okay, then the ENV is going to be an object with all the values um, with their proper types. So what we want to do is just export the ENV so that we can use it in our app. And let's say that we want to access this in, in a page. We can just do ENV dot and we can see all of the properties here. Here's env with the type development or testing or production because that's how we defined it. The superbase, public anonymous key, there's the port, sd type number, and there's also the superbase URL. So I can just save this and have, for example, the port show up here, which is 3000. If we do the same with process.env dot, we can see that it's not it's not there, but if we type in port, we still get the value because it does exist, but TypeScript is not aware of it. So there's also a way to take this solution even further and uh, let process.env inherit the types that we defined. And if you want to do that, you can declare global, declare the Node.js namespace, and redeclare the process env interface to extend from the schema type. So if I save this and go back to the layout and do process.env dot, we can see that we now have the environment, the public anonymous key, the URL, the port, etc. But there's a problem with this and uh, that is the type itself. You see that port is still being considered as a number, which is not true technically because if I do type of process.env.port it's going to be a string if I change the process.env to just env it's going to be a number because env is our Zod schema and process.env even though it inherits or extends our schema's type the thing is that all of the environment variables under process.env they're all strings so if you're going to be using types 
uh, on top of the environment variables, have that in mind. They're always going to be strings. It's okay if you don't want to do this. It's okay if you just want to use process.env. It's perfectly fine. And that is a tip. Thanks for watching. See you next one.